This can be kind of a frustrating time of year to find walleyes and get them to bite. This late summer period, you've got a lot of fish doing a little bit of everything, feeding up shallow, feeding out deep, bugs, minnows, perch, everything. So there's just tons of different options. Where do you start? Today I'm gonna run through four spots that I like for this kind of late summer period. And these are the types of spots that are gonna hold fish all the way through fall. So let's dive on in. Spot number one for me is actually gonna be saddles. And it's not only a late summer, summer to fall transition type of thing. There's fish on them all year round. But the lake we're on today and the last couple lakes I've been on, saddles have been just loaded. And a saddle is where you've got kind of a pinch point. You maybe have two shallower pieces of structure, whether it's two humps or two points, and you've got that little flat spot in between them where fish congregate. And if you think about it, picture it being like deer trails if you're a hunter. You've got two, three, four deer trails crossing and making an intersection. You want your deer stand right there. It's a high traffic spot. Or like speaking of traffic, a traffic light in town. An intersection where you've got people congregating. That's what these are. So you've got fish following the contour lines on all four corners and they meet in the middle. And so a lot of the times these saddles are going to be just high percentage spots. Typically I'm looking for like 10 would be kind of on the shallow side. Usually they're like 15 to 25 feet deep is what I find the best to be. Um, and I like ones that don't have many weeds on them. Usually you've got little weed points and weed corners and weed humps and that saddle is gonna be kind of a, a sand or soft bottom in the middle. And there's just lots of bait fish there. There's lots of perch there, sometimes shiners, a little bit of everything. It's just like a buffet line. But the cool thing about those, those weed-free saddles is they're easy to graph. They're easy to slide up. You don't need to have side imaging. You absolutely can, and it'll help you catch fish. But this time of the year, fish are pushing deeper. 2D down imaging. You're gonna have better luck a lot of the time seeing fish on your graph this time of year if you're running that old school technology of just 2D sonar. Number two for me, and it's probably my favorite to fish, is gonna be deep humps. And I'm looking for stuff that tops off around 20 to 30 feet of water, surrounded by deep water, and I want it close to the basin, that soft bottom, deep basin with the deepest water in the lake. I want these humps that poke out and get near that big steep break and preferably are also off of some giant feeding flat. So we've talked a lot about how spring, summer walleyes, you look for the biggest pieces of structure, the biggest flats in the lake, and you're fishing those shallow top sides, kind of the bottom edge. Well, now it's just a natural progression. Fish slowly poke their way out to deeper water as the water gets warmer, as you get into that late summer period and even into the fall. So if you can find those big pieces of structure, those big flats, and then if there's humps that are sprinkled out off the edge, surrounded by deep water before you dip into the basin, those are just absolute money. Some of them are gonna have weeds on the top. I, my dream situation is gonna be a hard bottom, whether it's gravel or sand, because they're easy to drive over with your 2D and down imaging and graph and look for fish. Deploy a jig and wrap. If you don't get bit in the first three rips, keep moving, keep going, but they're easy to scan. Some of them are gonna have weeds, like with these zebra mussels in clear water now. You got coontail that grows all the way out to 30 feet of water. There's still gonna be fish on those, it's just you have to put in a little more work to get the reward because they're not as easy to graph because fish will be hiding in that coontail and you can't necessarily always drop a jig and wrap in that coontail without getting snagged up. So then sometimes we're fishing jigs or maybe pulling a spinner on a rig, but these deep humps are just kind of that last piece of structure before you get to the basin. And ideally you go out and you scan and S over the top of them. And if you don't see fish, get up on plane, drop back down on the next one. And if you put in your time behind your screen and not fish until you see, here they are. Now I'm gonna drop down, you're gonna catch a lot more fish. And that brings us to number three. Not all lakes have deep humps or even any humps to fish, so then what do you do? Then I'm looking for kind of a similar thing, that last piece of structure that pokes out into the basin. And it might just be an outside weed edge, uh, it might be, you know, you've got those big feeding flats and it drops off from 10 to 20 feet of water. And then on that bottom edge, you've got kind of some deeper coontail, 20 to 25, 28, whatever it is. Every lake is gonna be a little different, but I'm looking for that last piece of structure before you get out into the basin. Outside weed edges are gonna have a ton of fish, something that you can run with your trolling motor set at one mile per hour to one three 
and pull bottom bouncers along that whole edge and cover water. But it just, it's very similar to number two where what I'm looking for is that last piece of structure before you get into the deepest water in the lake and fish will be piled up there all the way until that water temp drops down below into the upper 40s. Number four is gonna be basically basin fish, but what I'm looking for is the top edge of that basin, not the 50, 80, 100 foot deep stuff in the middle of the lake, but kind of that, usually it's around the 30 foot mark. Some lakes it's 20, some lakes it's upper 30s, but the top edge of that basin where you've got the hard bottom poking out from the structure and it turns into that soft, silty bottom of the basin and Tom Boley has done videos on this it's, it's just a key spot that you won't even maybe see on the map it's something you have to drive around and you'll see on side imaging if you don't have side imaging your biggest indicator is gonna be bait the thing is this time of year you get tons and tons of little perch piled up giant giant clouds of bait out in that I'm gonna say like 25 to 34 is kind of the typical range on the lakes around me and there's nothing out there other than bait and whether you can see the walleyes on 2D and down imaging or not, I guarantee you they're in that bait, they're under that bait, they're chasing that bait, they're eating. And these are fish that you can catch with lead core, running cranks to get them to dive a little bit deeper. You can run bottom bouncers, you can hit fish with jig and wraps if you see the pods. But a lot of the times what I'm looking for is just the bait and you know the walleyes are not gonna be far behind. And now there's some fun things you can do if you're lucky enough to have a live scope or a forward facing sonar unit where you've got these suspended fish in the middle of nowhere and they're maybe 20 feet down, 18 feet down, over 30 feet of water and they're cruising looking for bait where you can sharpshoot them with little finesse plastic on light heads or a jig and a crawler and it's uh, it's kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat it's not ideal because they're really sporadic and scattered but it's really fun and the the most you know the most obvious way to target and catch those fish is to just cover a lot of water and that's where lead core shines you throw out the trolling rods you throw out whether it's a jointed shad wrap or a little shallow shad wrap you're getting these tiny crankbaits down where fish just don't see them because lead core sinks and will get those baits instead of running six seven feet deep you can get them down as deep as you want set your speed at two miles per hour if you don't have any way to know that just idle <laughs> you know you can have a 14 foot john boat and do this and cover enough water and those fish are out there roaming and not holding the structure they're just chasing bait so the more water you cover the more times you're going to cross paths with fish and get them to bite so these are four different types of areas that hold fish on all these local lakes around me whether it's a little 300 acre lake or a big 5,000 acre lake they've all got something similar to what i've talked about and they're all holding walleyes right now and the cool thing about these bites is it's not just this short two week window of late summer Pretty soon, nights are gonna get cooler. It's already kind of starting. We're gonna transition into fall. All of these areas are gonna hold fish all the way through the fall. So go out and catch some for yourself.